Hey everyone, what's happening? And today we are going over Peppermint OS 10 Respin. Now I thought this was a nice OS. I really enjoyed my time in it. So let's go ahead. Let's jump over to the desktop and let's get this done. Peppermint OS uses the LXDE desktop environment as its default. The interesting thing about Peppermint OS is that it uses the XFCE panel instead of the LXDE panel, which also includes the Whisker menu, which has Hover to Change Categories enabled by default, which is normally Click to Change by default, which I really like Hover to Change anyway. So I like that. Peppermint OS also has a dark theme enabled, which has transparency for inactive windows. I think this is a really nice feature. Now, Peppermint OS is based off of Ubuntu 18.04, which is the current LTS at the time of this recording. So, it has kernel 5 as its kernel, and LXDE is an extremely light desktop, so it is currently using 505 megs of RAM. And seems how I'm recording, that's actually extremely light. Uh, without recording, it's typically 350 to 370 megs upon boot without doing anything. One of the best features of Peppermint OS is its configuration options. You have the Peppermint settings panel which has different categories so you can easily find the settings you are looking for. The user settings has your desktop settings as well as the Peppermint control center which allows you to adjust the compositor, the window manager, your keyboard and pointer, etc. Your wallpapers, language support, etc. Now, the tweaks has a, an advertisement blocker, which allows you to use different services here so you can have different ad blockers on your browsers. It also comes with a browser manager which allows you to easily install different web browsers that are popular in Linux. Firefox is installed by default. However, you can also install Chrome without adding the repository in the terminal. This does it for you. You can also enable or disable NeoFetch in your terminal. So it starts up if you want uh, when you start your terminal. You have your updates and settings right here. You have your deconf editor, which is kind of similar to your registry editor in Windows. So you need to be careful about this because this edits all your config files for GNOME, etc., for your desktop environments, etc. And Here's your hardware, of course, this is where you install your drivers, your network settings, and your system settings for like users and groups. And here's your update manager and your synaptic package manager for and your package management as well as the software manager. LXDE is a GTK desktop environment. So naturally, Peppermint comes with a small suite of GTK-based applications. We've already mentioned Firefox. Your file browser or manager is Nemo. However, you can switch this out for Nautilus if you would like. Your video player is X-Player. 
Now, XPlayer can have some compatibility issues with some file formats out of the box. However, I would probably just install VLC Player or M MPV Player to get the codex and uninstall X Player. But that's just me. That's one of the things I would change about this if for my daily driver. You also have a BitTorrent client, which is Transmission, a nice BitTorrent client. You also have GNOME disks for disk drive and partition management. You also have the Tay calculator. And you have a few others as well, but this is the basics. I was particularly impressed that the Peppermint team has developed a tool that allows you to take web apps and integrate them into your app launcher. It's called ICE. ICE allows you to take internet cloud-based applications and integrate them into your desktop environment using site-specific browsers or SSBs. Peppermint comes with a whole suite of SSB applications already integrated into your desktop. The games are SSBs as well as the office this is. They have integrated Microsoft Office as an SSB for the online cloud-based application for the free version. However, the paid version will work as well. Now, a lot of Linux veterans would be put off by including Microsoft Office in a Linux distribution. However, I do understand why they would do this. Some people are not comfortable using LibreOffice as the office suite and some people have also paid for the license for Microsoft Office therefore they want to still use it when they switch to Linux both of which I think are valid options now me personally I would remove these and put LibreOffice on there but that would be my choice but I think this is actually a rather interesting choice, but it is a good choice for those who still want to use Microsoft Office. Also, the graphics editor is Pixlr, which is also a cloud-based SSB as well. However, they are using an old version that uses Adobe Flash, which I find kind of strange because Adobe Flash is about to be killed as I understand it. So... I think they need to probably change this out. There are other cloud-based SSBs as well, such as Google Drive, Google Calendar, Gmail, and more. As a matter of fact, half of the applications that are in the Peppermint menu are cloud-based applications. Also, you have Dropbox integration installed by default as well. Overall, I found Peppermint to be a great experience. It's actually a different experience than I find in most Linux distributions. However, I did love it. Now, I may not choose as my main daily driver because I require different features, but it's still a great operating system to be using. Now, what would this distribution be best for? Well, LXDE is an extremely light desktop environment. So it would be perfect for laptops, especially older laptops, that don't have a, a lot of memory or resources. Or laptops that you just want a light desktop environment for. And with its web application integration, 
It could be perfect with, for laptops or computers that don't have a lot of storage built in. And you need to make the best of the storage that you have on the computer. So netbooks would be a perfect example there as well. Even though it would be perfect for desktop usage as well. And I would have no problem recommending this distribution. Especially seems how it's based off an LTS that at the time of recording this video will be supported for three years. If you like this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's what that thumbs down button is for. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you later. If you like my content and wish to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, if you wish to see more, check out the videos on your screen.